Let me pray. Lord God, you are so holy. Lord, as we think about who you are and, and what you've done for us this morning, Lord, help our devotion and hearts to be turned towards you. Lord, help this to be a time where we truly praise you from our souls, Lord. In your name, amen. Good morning, and welcome to Grace Bible Church. This is the part of the service where we celebrate the Lord's Supper. And so we're going to take a few minutes and remember the cross, remember what Christ did there. And then we're going to have a piece of cracker and a juice and, and spend some time in prayer. So as we do that, um, I'm going to look at Psalm 103. So if you go ahead and turn there for me, uh, that would be great. And if you don't have a Bible, there are men that would love to put one in your hands. Just raise your hand and they'll bring one to you. And if you don't own a Bible, that is our gift to you to keep. As you're getting to Psalm 103, we're going to start reading in verse 1. And so I want to set the stage a little bit about that psalm. It was written by David. It's one of at least 73 that he wrote. And David himself was described as a man after God's own heart. And he was described that way because of his obedience and devotion to Yahweh. This psalm is one of many where we get a window into what his devotion to Yahweh really looked like. This psalm, it's a psalm of praise and it offers a model for how believers should approach worship. They should approach worship with wholehearted devotion, using all of our beings to acknowledge God's many benefits. And David's, worship, David's words should encourage us to that, to praise God fully, not superficially. So as we read these words, they're going to be very familiar to you. In fact, most of you probably have these verses memorized. But I want to read it, and I want to look at it a little differently this morning. Let me start in verse 1. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits who pardons all your iniquities. Let's stop there. Let's look at the word bless for a second. When I think of the word bless, normally I think of a definition that is to bestow favor or benefit upon someone. But this cannot be the definition here because God is self-sufficient and doesn't need anything from us. Instead, bless in this context refers to an act of praise and worship and adoration. It is an expression of deep gratitude and reverence for God's goodness, his grace, and his mighty works. When David says, bless Yahweh, O my soul, he is commanding his soul to praise the Lord. He is calling on his entire being to acknowledge, magnify, and celebrate God's greatness. It's a call for heartfelt worship recognizing and proclaiming God's glory and all the ways Yahweh has blessed David personally, both spiritually and physically. Essentially, it's a way of exalting and honoring God in response to God's kindness, mercy, and love. We ask a question in our home. Are you talking to yourself or are you listening to yourself? We ask this question because many times we are listening to our sinful hearts and we are letting our sinful hearts pull our devotion away from Yahweh. We are allowing the troubles of this world to, dis to dictate our emotions instead of informing our hearts with the truth of scripture. Martin Lloyd-Jones puts it like this. Our main trouble is that we allow ourself to talk to us instead of talking to ourself. Am I just trying to be de deliberately paradoxical? Far from it. This is the very essence of wisdom in this matter. Have you realized that most of your unhappiness in life is due to the fact that you are listening to yourself instead of talking to yourself? Take those thoughts that come to you the moment you wake up in the morning. You have not originated them, but they are talking to you. They bring you back to the problem of yesterday. Somebody is talking. Who is talking to you? Yourself is talking to you. This Psalm is David recognizing that this tendency is in his own heart. So he is talking to himself. He is turning the conversation and talking to himself. And he's saying, self, praise God. 
In fact, he goes deeper and he says, soul, praise God. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. He is saying, praise Yahweh, soul. Soul, how could you not? Remember how great Yahweh is? Remember everything he has done for you? Soul, increase your devotion to Yahweh. James Montgomery Boyce explains this point well. What is the problem? Obviously, it is we have, that we have forgotten God's many benefits or blessings. It is human to forget. But let us remember this at least. It is a terrible thing to forget God's benefits. Unfortunately, I find myself here too often needing to remind myself of God's many benefits. And there are too many to number. When David lists them out, look at the first one that he lists in verse 3. Yahweh is the one that pardons all your iniquities. Iniquities here refers to the inner moral failures, acts of disobedience or wickedness. To pardon in this context means to absolve or release someone from the guilt, punishment, and consequences that those sins would otherwise bring. When David wrote this psalm, he didn't fully understand how God was going to fulfill his promise of pardoning our sins the way that we know now. We know that Jesus is our propitiation. We know that Jesus went to the cross as an act of satisfying the wrath of God due to sin. And through that sacrificial offering, his death on the cross was the perfect sacrifice that satisfies God's wrath once and for all. We know Christ took the punishment that we deserve. So God's justice is satisfied and believers can be reconciled to God. We know these things. We know that God pardoned all of our iniquities. David didn't know these details, but when he had to shepherd his heart towards praise, the first thing he used to stir his soul was to remind himself that God pardoned his sins. Praise God, O oh my soul. God is merciful and forgiving. Despite the ways in which we fall short or rebel against him, God extends his grace by forgiving all our sins, cleansing us from moral and spiritual debt. Have you come here today distracted by the weak? Is your focus on relationships with your friends here? Maybe you're here with the idea of serving the body and to learn more about God from Smed's preaching. That's great. And my encouragement to you in these next few moments is to pause and tell your soul to praise God for all of his benefits. And first and foremost, praise God for the fact that Christ went to the cross to save you from your sins. He took your punishment. Your iniquities are pardoned. Praise God. If you're here today, and by your own admission, you are not a Christian, that moment hasn't happened for you. And yet you're still accountable for your iniquities. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're gonna to listen to the message today. But I'd like to ask you to let the elements pass by as this is a time for those of us who are devoted to Christ to worship him. Christian, we're gonna take communion on our own this morning. And so when the men bring the cup and the piece of cracker, I ask that you remember the Lord's body for going to the cross that you remember the juice was the blood that was spilt for our sins, and then praise God and take communion on your own this morning. Men, can you please serve us? <clears throat> 